Okay, Chad, as promised, here's uh, a little video about projects that could be done on Sunday at the Invitational Members Splits Day. This is, a, this is the vault table, and as you can see, the front edge here is getting a little ratty. You can see here, there's actually some loose threads on either side where this is all stitched together here. So what we might do there is just trim those off, and I don't know if we can just dab some epoxy on the ends or something to keep that from spreading. And also in uh, you know in this area here, or from here down maybe we could paint that black and clean it up a bit. Uh, I don't, I think it would dry very very quickly. Um, here, what I'm trying to point out is along. Along the side of the tumbling strip, we have these tabs, and these are just like probably 16 inch pieces of Velcro, and they're actually supposed to, to go underneath the frame here, and around a leg, and then back up onto the floor. So this one's just not installed exactly correctly, but there are a few places where we should be installing a few more of those uh, I think as I move on here you'll see on the well I guess not but on the far side of the floor those should be every four feet or so the next thing here is the, of course the bar uprights and you can see there's a gap here uh, and that this just needs this just needs to be tightened and while we're at it if possible it'd be nice to, to actually back that out put some Loctite on the threads before it's re uh, refastened and then check the others on all all the uneven bars just check to make sure that everything's snug <clears throat> again here you can see loose ends uh, and if we inspect these what we do is uh, go go on and uh, have a look at where all the carpets fixed the carpet curtain I did this uh, a few years ago and it's contact cement and there's some in that bureau uh, sliding upright cabinet there at the side of the gym and all we have to do is take the, br the bristles of a brush and put it in put it in here on the carpet and on the metal frame and then that uh, can be properly uh, adhered. All we require here is a few staples and a box someone can climb up. Um, you know this this beam here, this wide beam is used quite often and as you can see it's starting to fall apart so what we could what we really need to do under, underneath the carpet on the edges to make it wider there's two by two and we need to, to actually go this way with some staples and fasten that back and then make sure we check all the way along the beam here and see if there's anything loose that that should be fastened more securely and then possibly in the future we'll have to look at actually redoing that entire beam <clears throat> now this chip foam is stored at the side of the gym and I think there's some more in the rail car what's happened is this has fallen off over a period of time from inside the trench pit. Kira's inside the trench pit here and she is lifting up the drapes or the curtains that hang down. So this is this here is the skinny part of the trench pit. But what we need to do is you'll see there's some there is bare concrete in here behind this curtain. There's a few other areas. This is where the pit starts to widen open, and there's a bare area there as well. So what we need to do is, <clears throat> what we used before were tap cons and big metal washers. And I think what happens is, eventually the weight of that foam just pulls through the washers. So it wouldn't be a bad idea for us to, to come up with some other way of fastening that. Same thing here. This should This should be up here. And there's a piece of trim that goes along there underneath. And it could be just metal trim or a, pe or, or a strapping of wood. But we need to find a way of putting that foam 
the foam back in place and and recurtaining that as as best we can. Oh, you'll also notice here. These are fridge casters, and this the platform that's underneath that opens and closes the trench pit is supposed to roll on there. And there's one of them missing, and it's on the little bureau beside the love seat over on the no uh, south side of the building. So there is another set, and they just have what I've done usually is just epoxied those in there with that five minute two part epoxy. This frame and this bar can be removed. So there's some, we'll need a socket set, but here it is fixed to the floor. Once we get that off, Chad, you're, um, this bar is the same width as the ones that we that we use to make the new frame bars for over the tumble track. But once that's removed, there will be a void uh, here where these things attach to the concrete. And there there is scrap foam in the rail car or somewhere that we're, where we could cut little slits in there and close that off. Uh, so it so it looks so it looks nice. Oh, I think I'm going the wrong way here. Sorry, folks. Yeah. Now these are the new frame bars uh, here on the wall, and what we need to do is we need to put something on the tumble track frame that will keep those from slipping back and forth. Uh, this is at the pit edge near the foam pit where the um, foam blocks are where the bar cable comes down here to attach and what I'd like to do is see if there's some way we can put a piece of wide velcro over that maybe tuck this edge in and then see if there's a way that we can get rid of that uh, get rid of that hole <clears throat> the other thing that I wouldn't mind doing depending on the number of people that are turning out and the kids is Last time when we added the new foam to the pit and we had the cubes out, we did not remember to put the tarp on top of the scrap foam. So you can see the scrap foam is surfacing here because the kids are digging down at the birthday parties and so on to, uh, you know, to, and it's all mixed up. So ideally, if the cubes could be thrown into this area, and onto the onto the beam mats, all the scrap foam taken to the bottom of the pit, and then a tarp installed, and then put the cubes back on top of the foam. That would be ideal. I know uh, I've tried to farm this project out a couple of times, and I don't know who sows out there. Uh, my sewing machine's broken. I don't know what's going on. It keeps breaking needles, but what we need is just some gym suit fabric, a cheap type of fabric from uh, Fabricland. This is gym suit fabric. It has a four-way stretch. And what it has, it on on here, there's a there's a seam right there, and there's a seam here, and then there's one that's all the way across the top. It's like a loop. So one of these pieces of bungee cord can go through that loop. And then, of course, on either end, it fits over these uh, pieces of two-inch pipe. And we, what I'm looking at is just making it look nicer and getting rid of this hole. This is partially designed. It has a function for, for training, but it also has a function for keeping the little toddlers out of the pit if the trench happens to be open. On here... What we normally do from time to time, you can see this is just a wooden dowel that's inserted into a metal framework. And we usually use blue duct tape or the white athletic tape. And this need, these areas, all four, need to be re, redone with the, with the tape. Oh, still going the wrong way. Sorry about that. This is a min the blue mini tram. Uh, of course, what what we see here is this um, 
this bungee cord is supposed to be woven through all of these holes all the way around and it's just what's happened is it's just come undone so there is bungee cord like that for sale at Abbott's if we need to get some more um, you could take a sample over there but uh, it'd be nice to have that properly reattached through those holes and then tied off underneath I do for to to cor to correctly fix this uh the trampoline bed has come unwoven and I do have the repair strings I don't I think it can be done in place uh, I have to dig them out I, these were given to me by the manufacturer but they actually go they will be woven through the through the tramp all the way and it's going to be tedious to do it all the way from one end of the tramp to the other but it's um, required that we actually this whole area that's being affected needs to be replaced now these are the doors going into and out of the gym and the change room at one point Kurt and I had come up with a with a uh, pool noodle that was cut in quarters and then, of course, it was just, we used a spray foam on, it, or a, I'm sorry, a spray glue. There's still some in the cupboard there at the gym. But I think we need to reattach something or come up with something here that prevents the little ones from having that metal door open on their feet. Throughout the facility, there are areas like this where the ceiling tiles are not properly inserted and there's some areas where they're actually um, not in at all and I don't know okay this this is in the boys change room this this light isn't mounted properly I'm assuming the ceiling tiles up in the ceiling and got taken down for whatever reason maybe when we we're changing a bulb or something it just hasn't properly been been put back but maybe we need to go ahead and and do that Last week the city came because water was seeping up between these floor tiles. Now, I have noticed the last few days that is still happening. Um, so I don't know if that's residual water inside the, you know, inside the, the tiles. But when they removed the toilet, of course, they, they pulled this out. I know there's a stack of these tiles upstairs in the furnace room. I'm wondering if we cut a little piece and just sort of uh, epoxy it in there if it might look nicer than what we have currently. Again, this is a city, this is the city steps going up in the common area between soccer and gymnastics. I always had a bit of a problem here with uh, the way this is and wondered if maybe we could get on and speak with Dave. Myers and see if there's any money that we could access to you know fix some of the paint actually repaint all of the doors because this is the one going into the upstairs gym of course there's all sorts of holes here in the drywall there used to be some lockers at the top of the stairs and that wall could that wall could really be could really be fixed this is the new window film inside uh, the upstairs party room. The window film's great. We've had a lot of great feedback about that. Uh, just one thing I wanted to point out is they're recommending that we don't use any type of Windex or vinegar or anything like that. I think what they were recommending was a wee bit of baby shampoo or mild dishwashing detergent inside um, to wipe those. Um, nothing nothing harsh this is inside the upstairs kinder gym I didn't know if, if there would be some way we could put a you know put a, a a padding on here perhaps like a a ball that's notched out or something and mounted on there that looks a little bit sharp and some of the other posts are padded adequately and maybe it just has to be addressed on that that particular one but those could be inspected. 
Well, I'm looking at this wall, Chad, and of course, this is where we used to have all of the coaches' pictures mounted. I'd like to do something like that again, but I'm wondering if it might be a good idea to just go ahead and put a bulletin board up there across there. That way, if we're poking something into it, it's, it's designed to, to take those, those holes. Ideally here, too, if these, if these could be emptied uh, and then the locks could be functional again, it would be nice to store a bunch of the birthday party stuff all the supplies and maybe some of the arts and crafts stuff in there rather than in the furnace room. Again, this door is uh, could be painted. Maybe that's one project that we could look at uh, to talk to the city about. This poster just needs, again, some staples. Now this is in the downstairs change room adjacent to Kim's office. And this is when, when the city made this wheelchair accessible. Of course, they didn't finish the, the trim. This sink is ready to fall off the wall. I don't think this cabinet is really that suitable for anything. They left holes here in the walls. I really think this is unfortunate that they would make those changes and not finish this properly. And I don't know if we go ahead ourselves and just... Uh, paint this, uh, fix the drywall, or have someone fix the drywall. Um, I'm sure little things like this could be addressed by uh, someone without too much drywall experience. It's not like it's we're taping seams or anything, but uh, we really should look at revamping this whole bathroom. Of course, keeping it accessible, but making it much nicer for the people that come to the gym. There are a few other things. This is in the girls' uh, invitational change room, the toilet paper dispenser. Looks like it's already been sort of uh, modified, but the cover's missing, and it might be a good idea for us to get one of those from Gould Paper, or wherever we buy our stuff, have it delivered before the Blitz Day on Sunday, and that could be installed. And then... The, I did already replace one in the boys' change room, and but it's only got one screw fastening it to the wall, so sometimes it gets a little cockeyed. I think over the weekend, if we have a hammer drill at the Blitz Day, it'd be ideal to put another fastener in there to keep it from, from spinning around. This is between the showers and... Uh, of course, it's some type of a, a curb thing that you'd use in a parking lot. I don't really think it fits in. Um, of course, it fits in there and causes a barrier so the water can't leak out of the shower. But it would be nice if that was painted. I don't even know if that's possible, but it would be nice if that was painted either the same color as the trim uh, or the same color as the door because it really looks kind of silly. There are other issues on these doors here, up higher, especially in the boys' change room where the doorknobs have banged together and those doors also need to be repainted. Anyways, that's all I have for right now. Maybe back at the gym this afternoon, I've asked Kim and I've asked uh, the rest of the staff if there's anything they want to point out. We could add it to the list and have it for you on uh, Sunday. Thank you.